اللهم صل على محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفر ونستهدي ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات آمالنا من يهد الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله انتجبه لولايته واختصه برسالته وأكرمه بنبوته أمينا على غيبه ورحمة للعالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله وعليهم السلام أوصيكم عباد الله ونفسي بتقوى الله وأخففكم من عقابه فإن الله ينجي من اتقاه بمفازتهم لا يمسهم سوء ولا هم يهزنون ويكرم من خافه يقيهم شر ما خافوا ويلقيهم نذرة وسرورة وأرغبكم في كرامة الله الدائمة وأخففكم مقابه الذي لا انقطاع له ولا نجاة لمن استوجبه فلا تغرنكم الدنيا ولا تركنوا عليها فإن هذا غرور كتب الله عليها وعلى أهلها الفناء فتزودوا منها الذي يكرمكم الله به من التقوى والعمل الصالح فإنه لا يصل إلى الله من أعمال العباد إلا ما خلص منها ولا يتقبل الله إلا من المتقين After all due praise to Allah Almighty Subhanahu wa Ta'ala our creator our nourisher our provider our sustainer our lord we seek best of his blessings and favors for his most beloved servant for best of his creations our nabi and our rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and his purified household ahlul bayt alayhi musallatu wa salam جماعت المسلمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Once again in the sacred hour of Jum'ah, I'd like to remind myself and all of you who are present here for taqwa of Almighty Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Respected brothers and sisters. every day in our life we witness different phenomena of the nature sometimes those phenomena are rare and sometimes very common and every day we experience them all these phenomena and different situations of nature different expressions of nature are signs of almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's might and power all these signs which we experience and we witness are important for us and how we react and respond to them is very crucial is very crucial is very important 
in Surah Mubarakah Ye Fatir from verses number 13 to almost 16, 17 Almighty Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala draws our attention to different signs of nature. In verse number 13, Almighty Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Yulijul Layl fin Nahar, wa Yulijul Nahara fin Layl, wa Sakhara Sham Sabal Kamar, Kulun Yajiri, Le Ajalim Musamma. And he who, Almighty Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, makes the night pass into the day and makes the day pass into the night. And he has disposed the sun and the moon, each moving for a specified term, le ajlin musamma. Zalikumullahu rabbukum. Indeed, 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 that is Allah your Lord, to whom belongs all the sovereignty. Lahul mulk. After looking this natural phenomena around you, there are people who don't understand, who don't reach to the truth behind this amazing nature, but they seek for the wrong reasons tad'una min dune and they invoke someone other than him ma yamlikuna min khitmir they do not control so much as the husk of a dead stone they are nothing they have no power they have no control. Ma yamlikun min qitmir. In tad'uhum la yasma'u du'aukum wa law samayu mastajab gulakum wa yawm al-qiyamati yakfuruna bi shirkikum wa la yunabbi'uka mithlu khabir. Again explaining these people's situation who are looking for wrong reasons. If you invoke them, they will not hear your invocation. And even if they heard, they cannot respond to you. And on the day of Qiyamah and resurrection, they will forswear you, polytheism, and none can inform you like the one who is all aware. And that is very important point now. Verse number 15. Ya ayyuhan nas antumul fuqara ila Allah wallahu wal ghaniyul hamid. O mankind, O people, you are the one who stand in need of Allah. Antumul fuqara. You are purely dependent on Allah. Wallahu huwal ghaniyul hamid. And indeed Allah is all sufficient and all laudable. Yes, this is Quran's invitation when it comes to looking and witnessing and reflecting on natural phenomena. However, in the history of mankind and humanity as Quran in Surah Mubarakah Fatir refers to this reality reacted in a different way. Sometimes ignorance, jihalat and darkness of lack of understanding and knowledge took them to superstitious beliefs and kharafat and fantasies and you know something like that 
and they you know thought that these especially when it came to rare type of phenomena rare phenomena of nature like earthquake like floods like lightning like solar or lunar eclipse for example they they could not understand and when they could not understand they tried to interpret which quran as i say surah mubarakah author refers to that and they end up in complete wrong jahalat and ignorance and of course the quran opposes that jahalat and ignorance with very very strong terms hmm. in surah mubarak and am verses 70 and onwards 70 to 74 is the nabi ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam you know addresses these people who were lost and stuck in understanding of natural phenomena and were thinking that they are powerful and started to worship sun and stars and so on and said no no inni wajjahtu wajhi lil ladhi fatara as-samawati wal ard hanifan wa ma ana min al-mushrikin there ibrahim came with a very important and striking position no no i don't have time to read all those verses early from 74 onward till 79 you know where ibrahim analyzes analyzes you know he says okay you believe that sun is god sun is powerful oh hada rabbi but then when ibrahim look at uful and descend and drop and fall of the sun and going down of the sun inni la uhibbul afilin i don't like those who descend who come down they cannot be god and he refers to moon and he refers to stars and he refers to all oh. ah oh. and then quran says wa kadhalika nuri ya ibrahim malakut as-samawati wal ard wa la yakuna min al-muqrin of course a great deal of explanation required in understanding this very very important ayat of quran that we showed ibrahim the reality that who is behind of course this nature and different phenomena of nature rare even phenomena of nature those phenomena which you cannot understand antumul fuqara ila allah you are purely depend this is what you should understand from the nature so one side of course this type of reaction and we have of course plenty of examples in the surah god in our own history of islam for example and i'd like to draw your attention that when our nabi and rasul sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam son ibrahim passed away it happened to be at the same day there was a solar eclipse and all of a sudden people all of a sudden people you know started to say that you know son of the prophet died and therefore the sun and solar eclipse is for example happening prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know could have exploited this situation in his favor to prove his genuineness for example no but he did not and he said no 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 solar eclipse or lunar eclipse got nothing to do with death of anybody including my sign they are signs of allah they are signs of allah go to the masajid and remember almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's a reminder this rare phenomena this not so common phenomena of solar or lunar eclipse is a reminder that there is somebody behind all this system so go and remember him and pray and therefore salat of ayat or salat of signs became compulsory and fard and wajib 
and inshallah we will announce tomorrow is solar eclipse in the morning and those who follow school of Ahlul Bayt from we'll give the information from I think 720 or something like that for an hour there is a solar eclipse in namaz of ayat or salat of ayat is compulsory to be performed in that particular time why why salat of ayat why this namaz to be performed in that particular time you know why because this is a not a common phenomena is a rare phenomena this phenomena provides an opportunity for you to reflect and think and remember allah and similarly in any natural disaster situation like a storm like i don't know flood like earthquake again the same salat of sign becomes compulsory why because in all these situations that nature that pure nature comes out it can of course be diverted toward jahl and ignorance or it can be diverted toward truth and haq and haqiqat and almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is really important but as insan and human beings developed the sciences and of course you know evolved in, in the understanding of nature and so on another turn insan took human being took huh? first as i said could not understand this or at least rare phenomena of nature and created fantasies and stories and superstitions but then sometimes when understood the phenomena created a sort of a arrogance in him and sometimes resulted in a claim and situation where saying we know everything how it happens we know how this world is created i don't know big bang or this or that we know how these stars we are aware of the evolution of this whole cosmos and everything so we know there is nothing by the name of god there is no creator even coming to that but then again surah mubarak ayah fatir says wa antumul fuqara ila allah you are indeed depending on allah this nature will remind you that you are indeed dependent and what we saw in last 3 years proved the same important point that we are nothing with all our progress with all our achievements with all our knowledge with all our sciences we cannot fight back a virus something which we cannot even see by our own eyes which we after so many years now three years passed and whole world's research and scientist and everything has focused and exhausted their energies on it even today a new mutation comes up and now it look like that we are completely helpless helpless antumul fuqara ila allah this is a reminder that antumul fuqara ila allah you are purely and purely dependent on allah you have nothing yeah of course that jahl also sometimes existing you know with all these theories about that jahl also quran fights with it islam fights with it but also quran fights with this arrogance of human development and human sciences also when this wants to deny and wants to claim that we are independent and we don't need anybody or anything antumul fuqara when you look at the weather trends for example when you look at the floods for example when you look at the situation we never experienced for example you know what role we played that's a different situation but end of the day we we feel we understand this situation and that is what i would like to draw your attention that these rare natural disasters and phenomena be we floods or earthquake or volcanoes or i don't know things like that or even insurgence of virus viruses and diseases 
and in these viruses mutations and our complete ignorance and lack of knowledge all that is a reminder that we are purely and purely dependent on almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala antumul fuqara ila allah wallahu ghaniyul hamid awsikum ibad allah wa nafsi bi taqwa allah wa asuman allah wa iyyakum bi taqwa wa ja'al al akhirata khairan lana wa lakum fa inna khairal hadith wa ablagh mu'izati al muttaqin kitab allah al aziz al hakim bismillah ar rahman ar rahim wal asr inna al insana la fi khusr illa alladhina amanu wa amilu as salihat وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهدي ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون وجعله رحمه للعالمين بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا الى الله باذنه وسراجا منيرا من يطع الله ورسوله فقد غوى فقد رشد ومن يعصهما فقد غوى اوصيكم عباد الله بتقوى الله الذي ينفع بتعته من عطاه والذي يضر بمعصيته من عصاه الذي اليه معادكم وعليه حسابكم فان التقوى وصيه الله فيكم وفي الذين من قبلكم قال الله عز وجل ولقد وصينا الذين اوتوا الكتاب من قبلكم واياكم ان تتقوا الله وان تكفروا فان لله ما في السماوات وما في الارض وكان الله غنيا حميدا ان تفعوا بموعظه الله والزموا كتابه فانه ابلغ الموعظه وخير الامور في المعاد عاقبه ولقد اتخذ الله الهجه فلا يهلك من هلك الا ان بينت ولا يحيا من حيا الا ان بينت وقد بلغ رسول الله صلى الله عليه واله وسلم الذي ارسل به فلزم وصيته وما ترك فيكم من بعده من التقلين كتاب الله واهل بيته الذين لا يدل من تمسك بهما ولا يهتدي من تركهما اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك على محمد عبدك ورسولك سيد المرسلين وامام المتقين ورسول رب العالمين اللهم صل على علي امير المؤمنين ووصي رسول رب العالمين عبدك ووليك وحجتك على خلقك وايتك الكبرى والنبع العظيم وصل على الصديقه الطاهره فاطمه سيده النساء العالمين وصل على سبت الرحمه وامام الهدى الحسن والحسين سيد الشباب اهل الجنه وصل على ائمه المسلمين وهداه المؤمنين وهمات المستضعفين علي بن الحسين زين العابدين ومحمد بن علي باقر العلوم وجعفر بن محمد الصادق وموسى بن جعفر الكاظم وعلي بن موسى الرضا ومحمد بن علي الجواد وعلي بن محمد الهادي والحسن بن علي الاسكري والخلف الهادي المهدي حججك على عبادك وامناك في بلادك ثلاثا كثيره دائما اللهم افتح له فتحا يسيرا وانصره نصرا عزيزا اللهم اذهر به دينك وسنه نبيك حتى لا يستخفي بشيء من الحق مخافه احد من الخلق اللهم انا نرغب اليك في دوله كريمه تعز بها الاسلام واهله 
وتذل بها النفاق وأهله وتجعلنا فيها من الدعاة إلى طاعتك والقادة في سبيلك وترزقنا بها كرامة الدنيا والآخرة اللهم ما حملتنا من الحق فعرفناه وما قصرنا عنه فعلمناه أوصيكم عباد الله ونفسي بتقوى الله Once again, brothers and sisters, I remind myself and all of you who are present for taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be conscious, to be aware of Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasures and displeasures. To be always looking at different natural phenomena around us in different phases of life as a reminder of our dependency on Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a reminder of our weakness, a reminder of our poverty, our existential poverty on Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are indeed fuqara ilallah. And as I said, every sign is a reminder. And therefore, this sign of solar eclipse, for example, similarly, is a sign toward the same situation, of course, and indeed. Someone asked from Imam Reza alayhi salatu wasalam about why salat of ayat, you know, and why this you know, is being compulsory, and he said, إِنَّمَا جُعِلَ الْقُصُوفِ salat لِأَنَّهُ مِنْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ Eclipse is the reason to perform salat. Why? Because eclipse is a sign of Allah. لَا يَدْرِي الرَّحْمَةُ ظَهَرَتْ أَمْ لِأَذَابِ We don't know. This particular sign is reminding us of mercy of Allah or azab of Allah. Again, same situation of being dependent, being hanging. So Prophet of Islam sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam loved to draw his ummah, to pull his ummah and nation towards his creator and towards its merciful Lord in the Zalik at that time. لَيَسْرِفْ أَنْهُمْ شَرَّهَا وَيَقِيهِمْ مَكْرُوهَهَا Allahu Akbar. So at this particular time by making dua, Allah can prove protect them from every possible evil. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected and diverted azab of people of Yunus, Nabi Yunus nation, hina tazarrahu ilallah, when they made dua and they backed in the court of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Reminder. To go back to Allah, to humble down before Allah, tazarraw ilallah. Respected brothers and sisters, of course, as you are all well aware, this mutation, which as I said is a sign to think, to reflect how dependent we are and how might and power of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala overrules all of us with all our achievements and progress. Also, these three years, now and then, almost every turn of this journey of pandemic exposed so many things in our character, in human behavior. And this recent one also again exposed injustice, oppression of human being on human being. You saw that as soon as this variant was announced, certain countries who call themselves 
countries of the first world reacted like a jerk reaction, you know, and banned and closed the borders of certain countries, especially our country and African, Southern African countries, with absolutely no excuse, no scientific proof, no reasoning. I don't want to now go in those details, but just would like to draw your attention to this attitude and behavior. This selfishness in insan and especially Western mind and brain, which is so selfish from centuries and even until today, while they wear very beautiful gaps and clothes of human rights and civil society and humanity and compassion and this and that. But how they react, how they respond to people, maybe they are in need for support and you shut them and you give this message to your own people, we are safe huh? because we got nothing to do with these people. Huh? You don't realize that this type of shutdown, what type of disaster will create for the people, what suffering it will bring to those people. And your reasoning is not a scientific reasoning. You who are supposed to be leaders of science and rationality and, you know, not panicking, and all that slogans you give, but how you react. I, as I said, a lot to discuss, but just draw your attention to this mentality of West. You can see it today when they hide behind beautiful slogans of human rights, of compassion and all those beautiful slogans for humanity. You know, they want to give right to everybody. You know, if you say something about anybody, immediately LGBT, I don't know this, that, gender, based injustice and oof, they've got everything to say. But they punish people as nations, doesn't matter. It's not an issue. But they are forgetting, they're not safe. Huh? Again, antumul fuqarao ilallah. Not safe. Not safe. There is someone beyond your apparent powers and capacities you think you have. This is, this is really a, just a reminder for us, again a reflection for us to think that how first world responds and reacts to the third world. How rich and how west and how the developed world treats the underdeveloped, the underprivileged Africa and the poor. Awsikum abadallah wa nafsi bi taqwallah وعاشوا من الله وإياكم بالتقوى وجعل الآخرة خيرا لنا ولكم فإن خير الحديث وأبلغ معيزة المتقين كتاب الله العزيز الحكيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعاصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر